cold start action for you. So I have to say, this truck's just been such a treat to drive. I spent the last few nights zipping her around, rolling some coal, upsetting environmentalists, and uh, you know it's everything I thought it would be. I have to knock a little rust off of my uh, shifting skills, but I'm um, I'm starting to get it. And man, that twin stick, uh, those two transmissions, it's sure fun to drive around. So just been enjoying that, and I was successful in my goal of uh of taking my daughters to school good um, so I did that and a lot of people are probably thinking well now that the trucks on the road there's not gonna be many more episodes but you know there's still there's still a lot of work that needs to do in on this truck and and um, I'm gonna keep picking away at it but I was thinking you know eventually eventually this project will be complete and uh, I thought you know what am I gonna do next so I changed the name of the uh, the channel if you've noticed uh, I call it twin stick garage now Kind of ironic because I don't really work in a garage maybe it should be called twin six gravel pad but I figure once I get this project done I'll just uh, just move on to another one I've always wanted a uh, an old Kenworth grew up watching Smokey and the Bandit and I thought maybe a 900 a if I could find one of those kicking around in a field drag that home and and start over on that one that would be kind of a fun project, so we'll see if I can find one of those. be even cooler if I found a twin stick Kenny, uh, an old 900A. So we'll keep looking. Those are, it's pretty rare, but we'll see what happens. And figure even if I don't get going on another, another big rig right away, maybe I'll, I'll look at some smaller projects. Um, I do have this old F-150 I bought for my daughter. Dragged it home and, and got it running, but the, the motor needs a little work. She's got a, like a lifter tick on the on the right side. Right, so maybe I gotta use that Heister forklift and get some use out of it and maybe we'll pull the old 302 out of here and do some work on that this winter and who knows maybe I'll find even another project. I'm thinking it'd be nice to have an old Ford 73 IDI diesel. That would be pretty cool and straight pipe that and the missus is probably going to wonder if I start parking a whole bunch of projects back here, but I figure that's what the uh, the plan's going to be. I'll just keep the content going. Hopefully everyone keeps enjoying the projects as much as I enjoy making them. So if you've been watching this uh, series, you know that I just did a kind of a redneck backyard roof repair. Uh, there was some holes from rust from many years of sitting on that field, uh, so I just kind of patched it up. I mean, it'll work for now. I, I really do want to get the, uh, uh, the the fiberglass roof cap put on here. But being this close to winter, I really don't want to turn it into a convertible with the truck sitting outside uh, if I had any issues or something didn't fit. So I'm going to leave it for now. We'll throw the uh, the horns and the lights back on here just for the look. And then uh, we'll plan on putting that, that roof cap on in a future episode. So one night I was digging around on YouTube there and there's this uh, neat old guy. Uh, Uncle Tony's garage and he just restores old Dodge cars in uh, you know kind of he's got a small little shop there but uh, just a guy that's very knowledgeable and he was highlighting that there's you know you watch these shows like Gas Monkey and you know you got these five guys that all of a sudden just give her and jump on the car and they take it off and they send it to the sandblaster and then the next scene they come back and they put it all together and it makes it look like restoring these old vehicles is really easy but 
one thing that he mentioned that really resonated with me was he talked about the details and these shows don't show the details that go into a restoration especially one like on a big rig there's so many little things that you don't see like i was just climbing down uh, i'm going to try and work on the roof panel uh, and uh, i was looking at something like this so this is the old seal here and i can buy this from dirks uh the new seal or peterbilt i guess and you got to put new rivets on but that's that's probably a good couple hours of work to make that to even freshen that up and it's just there's every little thing on a truck that's been sitting out in a field for a long time so if you're going to undertake a you know restoration project just keep that in mind that there is just countless hours that go into the details before you finally get it finished so i was driving around one night and uh this young boy on a bike uh going down the sidewalk there did the classic you know honk the air horn and there was nothing i could do so i thought you know what's a big rig without air horns so they may be old, but we're going to mount them back on there. Boy, I sure hate like hell. Drilling holes in a roof that I worked so hard to patch, but um necessary evil i guess if i want to put these horns on here and i guess it's good practice for when i put the fiberglass lid on and uh and drill out those holes so what i'm going to do is uh to help seal i'm going to use some of this uh, insulation this nyco stuff i used on the inside it's got the nice sticky back and i figure that'll help seal it and then i'll put silicone on the uh the bolts to try and keep the rain and snow from dripping on my head There you go. Doesn't look like a truck again. So obviously I don't have the uh, the clearance lights wired. I just I really didn't want to drill any more holes in the roof and have more uh, dripping rain problems. So I'm just going to put those up there for for show for now. Um, but one thing, one tip, when you're doing a restoration that uh, spans over multiple years, is uh, make sure you put everything away in a certain spot. And mark it out so I'm trying to find the uh, oh what do you call that the, the the little valve when you pull the 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 cord for the air horns and I don't know where I put that so I might just rig it up with something else for now and I have to go buy another one of those so word of the wise make sure you're very careful with when you take things apart and where you put them and store them properly and mark them all out it'll make your life much easier when you get to the uh, the home stretch so as always, I appreciate the comments, both good and constructive. And uh, someone made a comment and said those are in the wrong place. Now these were how they were mounted when I got the truck on these aftermarket brackets. But uh, you were saying at all, uh, 359, 79, 89, Pete's all have mounts up above. And by golly, he's right. So I'm gonna move those over and mount those in there where they're supposed to be. So there you go, more of a classic look. Put some of the original gear back on the roof. And unfortunately, I couldn't find that uh, that hand valve, so excuse the ugliness. I had to just kind of rig it up with whatever I had around the shop. Let's see if the horn works. <laughs> I love it. All right, on to the next job. So I'm finally going to mount these uh, chrome stainless steel trim underneath the uh, underneath the bunk here. So we'll get going on that. Should be a pretty easy project. That's going to look pretty sharp, but none of the holes line up. So it looks like I'll be doing some, uh, just like everything else in this project, a little bit of modifying, but yeah, that will look pretty sharp.
There. One down, one to go. There we go. Got the driver's side on there. Looking good. Figure all that hard work and such a beautiful day, why not take it for a little ride? So there you go. With each passing episode, she gets a little prettier and a little closer to the end. So one thing I added in the evening here was this neat old sticker I found on Amazon. I thought that uh, that matched the truck perfectly. So we're getting there, having fun doing it little by little.